The Lake Anjakuni event. In the unforgiving wilderness of northern Canada, where the howling winds speak more often than humans, the vanishing of an entire village is more than a mystery. It's an unspoken terror that befell Lake Anjakuni. This bizarre event, lost in the snowy expanses and the passage of time, remains one of the most haunting mysteries of the early 20th century. The story unfolds in a time when the harsh, icy landscapes of northern Canada were a frontier of both danger and opportunity. It was an era where fur trappers, braving the relentless cold, forged a symbiotic relationship with the native Inuit inhabitants. Among these trappers was Joe LaBelle, a seasoned wanderer of the wilds, known for his respectful dealings with the Inuit people. LaBelle, with his deep knowledge of the land and its secrets, had become as much a part of this frozen world as the Inuit themselves. However, in 1930, something profoundly unsettling occurred. LaBelle arrived at Lake Anjakuni, expecting the familiar warmth of the small village he'd visited many times. Instead, he was greeted by a silence that gripped his heart, a village eerily deserted, its dwellings standing like hollow sentinels in the endless white. The air was biting cold, and the only sound was the distant creaking of ice. Food lay abandoned over fires, now nothing but charred remains and smoldering embers. A palpable sense of sudden departure hung over the place, as if the villagers had been snatched away by the wind itself. LaBelle's discovery of seven sled dogs, starved and buried under the snow, only deepened the mystery. He found personal belongings, untouched food supplies, and a desecrated grave, its contents disturbed by human hands. This chilling scene prompted an immediate investigation by the mounted police. Yet, despite their efforts, not a single trace of the missing villagers was found. In some accounts, during their search, the officers reported seeing a distant, pulsating blue light in the sky, perhaps the northern lights, or perhaps a clue to the villagers' fate. The incident exploded in the Canadian press, with newspapers estimating that 25 villagers, including children, had disappeared without a trace. This inexplicable event captured the public's imagination, spawning a myriad of theories, ranging from the plausible to the outlandish. However, skepticism also surfaced. One sergeant expressed doubts about the existence of such a village, and questioned LaBelle's familiarity with the locals, noting that he had only recently obtained his first trapping license. In contemporary times, the modern mounted police dismissed the story as an urban legend, arguing that a settlement of such size in such a remote location was implausible. Yet, the tale of the vanishing Lake Anjikuni village lives on, fueled by anecdotal evidence and inspiring theories of alien visitation and other extraordinary phenomena. Valley of Death In the remote wilderness of Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula lies a landscape blanketed in mystery and death. Known as the Valley of Death, this foreboding region, nestled within one of Earth's most hostile geological formations, has claimed lives and confounded scientists for decades with its lethal and inexplicable phenomena. The Kamchatka Peninsula, a land of both extreme natural beauty and danger, is characterized by its rampant volcanic activity and a climate that is as unforgiving as it is frigid. It's here, in the far east of Russia, that the Valley of Death lies hidden. Discovered only in the 20th century, the valley comprises several smaller valleys formed of volcanic rock, creating a terrain that is as deadly as it is mesmerizing. The valley's landscape is a paradoxical blend of beauty and horror. It is littered with the perfectly preserved corpses of animals, victims of a mysterious force that lurks within this frosty domain. The same fate befalls humans who dare to venture too deep, with locals estimating over 80 lives lost to the valley's deadly embrace. This tale of terror began with two hunters in the 1930s who stumbled upon this macabre scene. Amidst the frozen carcasses, they experienced excruciating headaches and a sense of impending doom, prompting a hasty retreat. For decades, the cause of these mysterious deaths remained a puzzle. The animals showed no external injuries, yet autopsies revealed their lungs filled with blood, a silent, invisible killer at work. It wasn't until the mid-1970s that a thorough scientific investigation unraveled part of the mystery. Researchers venturing into this valley of shadows found an abundance of dead creatures, including birds that had plummeted from the sky. 
Their research pointed to the valley's volcanic rock, which emitted a cocktail of poisonous gases. In the absence of strong winds, these gases accumulated at the valley's lower levels, creating a death trap for all who entered. The phenomenon created a deadly cycle. Fallen birds attracted larger animals, which in turn drew predators seeking an easy meal. Foxes, eagles, wolverines, and bears were lured into the 1.2-mile-long valley, only to meet their demise. While scientific explanations shed light on some aspects of the Valley of Death, they did little to quell local rumors and wild speculations. Tales of otherworldly metallic spheres and alien objects with hostile energies, supposedly hidden by the government, swirl around the valley. Some adventurers and local hunters claim to have glimpsed these mysterious artifacts amidst the valley's lethal fog. Tourists are now banned from this perilous region, and there are rumors that someone, or something, is removing the bodies to prevent them from accumulating, a claim as unconfirmed as the more fantastical theories surrounding the valley. Still, the Valley of Death has more than earned its ominous name. Sonikov Land and the Lost Soviet Polar Expedition In the history of polar exploration, few tales are as strange and tragic as that of Baron Edward von Toll and his quest for the elusive Sonikov Land, a phantom island lost in the icy embrace of the Arctic. Toll, a prominent Russian explorer of the late 19th century, is best remembered for this infamous expedition that ultimately claimed his life between 1900 and 1902 in pursuit of a mythical land sought by explorers for centuries. The story of Sonikov Land traces back to 1810, almost a century before Toll's fateful journey. Two Russian explorers, charting the unyielding wilderness of the new Siberian islands north of Russia, reported seeing an undiscovered landmass enshrouded in a mysterious blue fog. This fleeting glimpse laid the foundation for a legend that would haunt the annals of Arctic exploration. Toll himself caught sight of this enigmatic island during his 1886 expedition. Unlike many who had tried and failed to find it again, Toll was determined to set foot on Sonikov land to unravel its secrets. His opportunity came 15 years later, when he embarked on a daring voyage aboard the ship Zarya. The expedition, however, was fraught with peril from the outset. The ship and her crew of 20 were beset by dense, floating ice, their attempts to break through repeatedly thwarted by the relentless Arctic environment. In 1902, with the Zarya trapped in the ice, Toll and three crew members embarked on a desperate attempt to reach Sonikov land by crossing the ice with a sledge and a kayak. They disappeared into the frozen expanse, never to be seen again. It's believed they reached nearby Bennett Island and waited for rescue before venturing south, but their fate remains one of the Arctic's most enduring mysteries. Decades later, their diaries and records were discovered, along with evidence of their stay on Bennett Island. Here, they'd built a shelter from driftwood, conducted surveys, and subsisted on bears and reindeer they hunted after their supplies dwindled. But of Toll and his men, or the mysterious Sonikov land, no further trace was found. In 1937, a Soviet icebreaker conducted another search, yielding no evidence of the mysterious island. Theories about the disappearance of Sonikov land vary. Some suggest coastal erosion erased its existence, while others speculate it was a mirage, perhaps a temporary landmass of fossilized ice or permafrost, vulnerable to the Arctic's harsh marine conditions. The Ping In the remote and icy waters of the Nunavut territory of northern Canada, a baffling sonic mystery emerged, unsettling the natural harmony and perplexing both locals and scientists. A persistent, unexplained pinging sound emanating from the seabed began to drive wildlife away, transforming once thriving hunting grounds into silent, empty expanses. The Nunavut region, known for its rich hunting grounds, plays a crucial role in the local community's way of life. However, a few years ago, the sudden scarcity of animals brought about a significant disruption. The hunters, dependent on these lands for sustenance and livelihood, were the first to sense a change, a shift that threatened their age-old practices. As the local community grappled with this change, theories about the cause of the anomaly proliferated. Some locals pointed fingers at a nearby mining company, suspecting industrial interference, while others speculated that animal welfare campaigners might be using the ping to deter wildlife from the hunting grounds. The mystery deepened, prompting the Canadian Department of National Defense to intervene in 2016. The military's investigation was comprehensive, 
deploying surveillance aircraft over the Fury and Hecla Strait, a crucial migratory route for whales and seals. This strait, usually bustling with marine life, had fallen silent, mirroring the deserted hunting grounds. The military utilized multi-sensor searches in their efforts to uncover the source of the sound. Yet, despite their extensive resources and technology, they found no evidence of machinery, submarines, or any other potential source. Following this inconclusive investigation, Canadian authorities declared no further action would be taken. Interestingly, soon after the military's involvement, the mysterious ping ceased. A local official confirmed its end and encouraged the hunters to remain vigilant, reporting any unusual occurrences. This sudden stop only added to the mystery, leaving everyone wondering about the true nature and origin of the sound. To this day, the source and purpose of the ping remain a subject of speculation. Theories abound, but no plausible evidence or explanation has emerged. The cessation of the sound did bring a gradual return of wildlife to the area, much to the relief of the local hunters. The Lost Franklin Expedition In the mid-19th century, Captain Sir John Franklin embarked on a voyage that would become one of history's greatest maritime mysteries. Leaving Britain's shores for the treacherous Arctic, Franklin and his crew vanished into the icy unknown, sparking legends and a century-spanning search. Known for his resilience and past exploits, including surviving by eating his shoes leather in an earlier expedition, Franklin was revered as a heroic explorer. The expedition to chart the Northwest Passage was a monumental undertaking. With 129 men, two well-equipped ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, and substantial funding, it was poised to chart a path through the unexplored Canadian Arctic. But the grandeur of the venture could not shield the crew from the harsh realities of the polar wilderness. After venturing into the frozen north, both the ships and their crews disappeared, giving rise to alarming rumors of cannibalism back in England. The truth, however, was even grimmer and remained buried under ice for years. HMS Erebus and HMS Terror became trapped in the relentless Arctic ice, immobilizing the expedition. For over a year, the crew endured the brutal Arctic conditions before abandoning their ships in a desperate bid for survival. The journey across the ice toward the Canadian mainland was fraught with peril. By this time, many, including Captain Franklin, had succumbed to the cold. The remaining crew's fate, lost in the vastness of the Arctic, continued to haunt the imaginations of those who sought to uncover their story. It was not until 2014, more than 150 years later, that a significant breakthrough occurred with the discovery of HMS Erebus and HMS Terror followed in 2016. Remarkably well-preserved, the ships provided invaluable insights into the ill-fated expedition aimed at charting the Northwest Passage. Examination of the wrecks and artifacts offered clues about the crew's life and their struggle for survival, revealing causes of death such as hypothermia, starvation, and lead poisoning. Forensic evidence suggested a distressing turn to cannibalism. While no written records were found on the ships, earlier documents like the Victory Point note, combined with Inuit accounts, have helped reconstruct the expedition's final days. Inuit lore, passed down through generations, tells of a hunter who boarded one of the ships long after its abandonment. He reportedly found a man resembling Franklin dead with a haunting grin, a position frozen in time caused by the extreme conditions. This story, among others, has woven itself into the fabric of Inuit culture. Many believe that a curse lingers over their land, one that can only be lifted when Franklin's remains are returned to England. Today, the fate of Franklin's full crew and the final resting place of Captain Sir John Franklin himself remains enveloped in mystery. Which of these Arctic mysteries do you think is the most likely to be solved? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.